We have done a few videos on rebuilding teams now, and when we did the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Detroit Lions, there was one thing they had in common that Jacksonville does not. They, at this point in time, do not know for sure who their quarterback of the future is going to be. That is different in today's video, as the Jags have their guy for what we presume to be the next decade plus in Trevor Lawrence, who was viewed as one of the best prospects of the 21st century. We are going to be building around him, and what is going to be a hair different versus the Jags and the Lions is Detroit was in a lot of games this year, whereas Jacksonville only had three of their 13 losses be within one possession. So a lot of the time, Jacksonville, for lack of better terminology, was getting the shit kicked out of them. See a 50-10 loss to the Patriots, and a 20-0 loss to the Titans in which Trevor threw four interceptions, for examples. Of course, the Lions had their share of bad losses as well, don't get me wrong, but they competed with nearly everyone. And aside from the final game in which the Jags stomped on the Colts, credit to them, it was another horrible year for them. And what I reiterate most is that this is not a one-year turnaround, in fact, this is going to be a two-plus year turnaround, so I don't want the expectations for Trevor next year and the Jags to go from 3-14 and 14 to 11-6 and 6 or 12-5. and 5. Remember, this is a team that has now had back-to-back -back number one overall picks, and that does not happen by accident. And I think you'll see that with how we attack today's rebuild, so without further ado, let's begin. The first thing we must address is the head coach situation. The Urban Meyer experiment, we'll call it, went about as well as you'd expect, and it was a complete disaster from the start. I'm still not a fan of Trent Baalke as the GM and think he will be fired soon enough, but what the Jags need to do, as simple as this sounds, is build around Trevor. Get him a great offensive-minded coach, because this team isn't close to competing for Super Bowls, and they have a really good prospect that teams would kill to have at the quarterback position. So, for today's rebuild, we are going to hire Doug Peterson, who coached the Eagles to a Super Bowl victory, and who was a large reason why Carson Wentz developed, though not the only reason, the way he did, and had the MVP caliber campaign back in 2017. Aside from 2020, Doug had a successful career in Philly, and I include the 2016 season and Carson's rookie season a part of that, because think about it for a sec. Wentz went from D1 AA football in North Dakota, North Dakota State, to the National Football League where he led the Eagles to a 7-9 record in his rookie season, then 11-2 the following year before he tore his ACL. For reference, Trey Lance, who was drafted number 3 overall this past year from North Dakota State, has not sniffed the field on a consistent basis, let alone lead his team to 7 wins. Granted, Trey did have a COVID year and everything like that, but my point is, is Carson did play pretty good, due in large part to Doug Peterson guiding him. Obviously, Carson had to have the talent, yada yada yada. So, I do trust Doug Peterson to help resurrect Trevor's career from what has been truly a disaster so far. The next matter of business is protecting Trevor. I am under the belief at the moment the Jags will select Evan Neal, the tackle from Alabama, to protect him and be his left tackle of the future. We knew Trevor was the pick last year in January, and I truly believe we know Neal is the selection now. And for their pick at 33, unless there is a true slam dunk defender that somehow slipped in the cracks of the draft or for some reason falls because these things happen to draft prospects at times, I think you have to get Trevor an offensive weapon as in a receiver to help him out. I would be extremely surprised if Jamison Williams falls this far even with the torn ACL, so for now I am thinking of someone perhaps like a Jahan Dotson, a talented receiver from Penn State, who had 91 catches and nearly 1200 yards this past year for the Nittany Lions. The reason for this selection is clear, as Trevor during his rookie season was consistently throwing to Laquan Treadwell, who had the best year of his career this past year and who had previously failed expectations as a former first round pick in Minnesota. This team has no true number one receiver, Marvin Jones is not a number one, and Neal is too talented of a tackle to pass up number one overall when they can get a receiver later in the draft like at pick 33 or maybe even 65. While we are on the receiver discussion, yes, they should re-sign DJ Chark to a at minimum one year or two year kind of prove it deal. 
Shark has not had the best quarterback play in his tenure in Jacksonville, but the good news for not only himself, but for the Jags is they have a lot of money to spend at the moment. So even if they have to overpay Shark, like maybe a two-year 30 or $32 million deal, it really won't hurt them because, again, they don't have to pay anybody right now. And now having said all of this, we head into 2022 with Evan Neal, Jahan Dotson, DJ Chark returning, and what will be a third year player in LaVisca Chenault. And that of course goes without mentioning the two running backs the Jags have in James Robinson and Travis Etienne. And there is a possibility the Jags are either content with the receivers they have or choose to sign a receiver in free agency, perhaps an Allen Robinson return, for example, who will be just 28 years old. The tight end of the future I feel like can go a couple of ways, and it will depend on how they attack this. Today we have them going Jahan Dotson receiver in the draft, and I ultimately have them going after a tight end like Mike Gesicki in free agency, who will be just 27 years old during the 2022 season and would be a good tight end for them for the next couple of years. However, if they go the opposite route, you know, tight end in the draft and receiver in free agency, I could very much see them drafting a Jalen Weidermeyer from Texas A&M, who is a very, very talented prospect. We have them snagging Mike Gesicki in free agency today though, and now the offense essentially is complete from a skill position standpoint, while also having the number one overall pick in the future and tackle Evan Neal. If you've noticed a trend, it's we have not addressed the defensive side of the ball yet, and here that changes. The reason for not addressing the defensive side of the ball to this point in the video is Trevor needs a lot of help. And while a great defense would obviously help him out and help the Jags stay in a lot of games, ultimately with a team that's had back-to-back -back number one overall picks and one postseason appearance in the last 12, 13, or 14 years, or whatever it's been, we're going to try and help the QB of the future flourish and succeed before we focus on the other side of the ball. So the Jags have four top 70 picks, and the next two picks are 65 and 70 overall. And I do think the Jags may double down here on defense on what will be night two of the draft in April. Having Evan Neal a receiver then double dipping on defense will be key to their rebuild. And if you're asking what players here at pick 65 and 70, they have pick 70 from trading corner CJ Henderson to the Panthers, who quietly stumbled to the line with a 5-12 record in their own rights, well, back-to-back -back defensive players here would be nice to start to build the defense. From this point on, the draft, the Jags have a 4, a 5, and 4 6th round picks. The Jags, nor any other NFL team, is going to draft something like 6 or 7 starters in the 2022 draft, so what would we be looking for from these later round picks are key contributors. Inevitably, they may get a lot of production from this drafts class, and I don't mean that in a positive way in the later rounds, because of the state of their current roster. I like the Jags having a lot of these later round selections, specifically the four sixth round picks, because of the chance of swinging and hitting on a long-term starter. We would like to think both Neal and the receiver of their choice are going to be long-term franchise player for the Jags. But hopefully, through trial and what will probably be a lot of error over the next year or two, they can get at least one defensive starter long term. Now, very quietly, the Jags did that with second round corner last year, Tyson Campbell. Tyson had a decent rookie season and, as of now, is a piece they would like to have for their long term plan. And the same goes for their third round pick, Andre Sisco, a safety they selected with pick 65 from Syracuse last year. So, if the Jags have a defense of of Miles Jack, Josh Allen, Andre Sisco, and Tyson Campbell, well, not that defense will cause Patrick Mahomes to stay awake at night, but this will be a team in 2022 along with some rookies that will beat you if you're not careful. The goal of the 2022 Jags should be to compete in every game. For them and a franchise like the Buffalo Bills or Kansas City Chiefs to have the same goals when players show up entering OTAs is not reasonable. The rosters are not close at this point in terms of talent. 
But if the Jags hire the right head coach and draft well, I'm talking Evan Neal, Jahan Dotson, another corner to pair on the outside, or even potentially sign a vet in free agency and perhaps sign a linebacker in free agency, like in Anthony Barr, who may want to be teammates with his former UCLA Bruin in Miles Jack, this team will easily be in the 7-9 win range next year. In that range, not necessarily for sure, but they'll, they'll be in talks for that. We saw them in Week 18 not only beat the Colts, but truly dominate them, and their quarterback, for seemingly the first time all year, looked good, not for a drive, not for a quarter or half, but for an entire game. And what's most important to note about Trevor looking good the way he did against Indy was that was a playoff game for the Colts. It was win and in for them, and they got smacked by 15 points. Now the 2022 offseason is so critical for them because it lays the foundation for the 23 and 24 offseason. And if they hit on not just picks 1 and 33, which we assume to be a tackle and an offensive weapon, I really don't see a reason why this team can't seriously compete in 2023. I think they'll be more of a pain in good team sides and not win a lot of games in 2022, again the 7 to 8 win range, and that's fine. But I really do think this team can get double digit wins in 20 2023, you know, the 10 to 11 area, and have Trevor Lawrence, for the first time at 23 years old, compete for a Lombardi Trophy, and be in the postseason is what I mean by that, not necessarily be in the Super Bowl if that's not 100% clear. Now anyways guys, that's all I have for today's video, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, now is the time I ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel because it would mean the world, and if you have a video suggestion, please let me know, I read all the comments, and I will see you guys next time, be safe, and have a great day, love you guys.